Welcome to Enlightened Evolution. I'm Kay. And I'm Christina. We're here to discuss the ebb and flow of our soul's healing and transformation through self-reflection, choosing intentionally, honoring thyself, and following your inner guide. Thank you for joining this safe space with us. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Enlightened Evolution with Kay and Christina. We're so grateful to have you here with us today. And we hope that we find you well. Today, we're discussing following your passion. This topic had me think a little bit, actually, because my passions have shifted during different seasons of my life. Mm -hmm. And I used to think that following my passion would have to be something that had to be monetized. And Mm -hmm. I've grown out of that belief system. Because although I'm a nurse and I love my job, I'm not super passionate about it. I'm passionate about taking care of people and helping them heal. But the whole nursing culture and the politics isn't really something that my soul craves and that brings me joy and fulfillment. So I find other ways to find my passion now these days. What about you? How are you doing today? Did we even touch on that? You just told me you're going to get a chicken pot pie. I've been thinking about it ever (laughs) since. The crust is so like (laughs) buttery, flaky. Mm. I don't think I've ever ate like a banquet chicken pot pie before, so I don't have anything to compare it to. But there's this place called Southern Baked Pies in the area here, and they have fruit pies, you know, different kinds. And then they have savory pies. They have a pot roast one. I got one the other day. So they do like mini ones, but I'm going to go pick up a full size one. The mini one was a ranchero chicken. So it was like chicken, sour cream, corn, had like a Southwest twist to it. It was delicious. Oh my God. It was so good. And I gave Jordan one bite of it. And he's like, I was like, what do you want for dinner tonight? He's like, pot pie. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds delicious. So that's what we're having. It reminds me kind of, well, I haven't had a a chicken pot pie since I was a kid, but like the pasties they make at churches, my mom will, they do like, I don't know, banquets or fundraisers or something, but the crust from those pasties, or I think that's what they're called, you Mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. The crust. I've never had one, but I've seen the signs for them. Oh, well, the crust. And every time I see the sign. Is it? Mm-hmm. Every time I see the sign, I think of like nipple pasties. <laughs> but it is pasties, I believe. It is past. I didn't mean to say pasties. It is pasties. But I do is love my like nipple a pasties. Thing? <laughs> 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 I, <don't. laughs> I hate bras, you know that. But I don't know if it's mm-hmm. Polish. It, it. I don't know. I think it, it kind of reminded no me of Amish. I don't know. Could be. I feel like I, I need very to fact check it though. I know. Please don't hate us if we're saying the wrong thing. <laughs> write us, write in, and tell us what the origin of pasties are. Little handheld meat pies. I mean, they're kind of awesome. Like a little handheld lunch. The paste pasty originated in Cornwall, England, and has been tracked back to the 1200s. Pasty's Mm. history is complex and the exact origins are unclear. So maybe we're both right. Thank you, AI. (laughs) Love that. (laughs) But yeah, to get back to your original question, I totally agree with the outlook on following your passion. I feel like maybe our generation was raised that You had to find out what your passion was before you graduate high school, and you need to make that your career. And Mm -hmm. I am learning that that's not necessarily true. And just like you, my passions change throughout my life. I think with touching on, you know, choosing your career, I think it's got to be something you care about. You know, you and I are both nurses. We care about it. But like you said, There's so much bureaucracy and so many things outside of our control that go into it that we care about it, but it's not always the thing that brings us joy. And that's okay. It brings us money. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> True that. And that's something that I think we're all a little passionate about. Mm-hmm. I found online somebody named Liz Watt, and she was touching on the seven essential human needs, which include physical, emotional, mental, relational, soul interaction, your higher self, and your spiritual needs. And as a process of development and growth, we tend to move through these things and they help you discover your driving help you to discover your driving force that can give you in give you like this window to look into to find your passion in life and what makes you feel fulfilled the most. Uh, I I do wish that I enjoyed going to work more, but on the days that I'm not working, I'm passionate about my garden. I'm passionate about mm. spending time with my cats and my kids and just finding different ways to find peace in my life and regulate myself. And I think that's the most important just to find ways to, to just feel peace. Yeah. I remember, I think as a kid, do you remember like what the first occupation you thought you wanted to do? Yeah. I wanted to be a mermaid. Oh, wonderful. You could still do that. That's actually more realistic today than, than it was back then. Have you seen the people that are professional mermaids? I have. I can't hold my breath for that long. I know I can't either. <laughs> I'm just saying. If you can dream it, you can be it. <laughs> but I have. Yeah, they're swimming in the tanks and they're waving. And I, I don't know. I know they get in some tanks with some little with some sketchy little sea life. That's not going to be me either. But that's what I really wanted to be. And then when I first, because yeah, you're right, in high school, they make you like pick this career and then you start college right after high school. It's like, come on, do you really know? Like some people do know and they build lifelong careers and they're very successful. I think I started with physical therapy at first and then was just like, nah, I, I wasn't passionate about going to school and learning at that time. And that's more of what it was. Mm -hmm. And then a few years later, after I had my kids and became a mom, I um, I was always, I tried to be passionate about being a mom and a homemaker and being at home. Life, like circumstances of life forced me to be put in a position to make more money and provide for my family. So I then chose nursing, which isn't like too far away from physical therapy, but it's a much mm -hmm. different um, approach to healthcare. It is. And so when I was a kid, I I know my mom has a home video of me saying I wanted to be a social worker at a very young age. And I was like, how did I even know what a social worker was? I mean, we didn't yeah. have CPS in the house at that time later on. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think maybe I'd learned about it at school or maybe I'd had friends that had dealt with it. I don't know. But my mom was like, no, you will get burnout there. You'll hate your life. And she wasn't totally wrong. Like the idea of going into social work, you want to help people in the community that are less fortunate. Mm -hmm. But then you have this system with what you can do, what you can't do. You have this caseload that is unmanageable that you actually can't accomplish stuff for your the people on your caseload. Oh, and so, so I like totally nursing. get why she said that. Precisely. <laughs> But so my mom was a nurse and she's like, it's so funny. Every year for nurses week, we always like go around at work and say, why did you become a nurse? And this is my story. My mom's a nurse. She said she would not pay for college unless I went for nursing. So I went for nursing and she paid for my books for one semester and then nothing after that. Thanks, mom. <laughs> but I don't like I've loved nursing. When I get into it, like when I first got into it, I was very passionate about it. I wanted to do something that was helping other people, no matter what avenue that is. But like you said, as you get into it, and we're going to talk about burnout in a free future episode, you get into these, the bureaucracies of the job, and it comes with any job. 
I do feel like ours and healthcare comes with a bit more weight because a lot of the times it's you have someone's life in your hand and you're short staffed and you can't provide the amount of care that you need to provide for this patient. And you're left with these ethical dilemmas that like really break you down of like, yeah, do I go back the next day sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know? Sometimes I don't. (laughs) Right. (laughs) We need those breaks. So I think it's important Yes, you should care about your career. You should do something that you're interested in. But I don't think you can put all your eggs in one basket. Because like anyone, anyone you talk to, my husband's a chef. There's, you know, he used to love it. But there's also bureaucracy in it. And the restaurant industry is declining. And you can't, he can't find good workers to work with him. So like every job has its thing. Mm -hmm. It does. I think that's why it's really important if you're somebody kind of like us that, I mean, we tolerate our job. There's moments that we probably find joy and fulfillment in it, but it's not something that we are extra passionate about every single day that we have to go and show up for it. Yeah, I mean, your hobbies can be your passion. Yes. I used to love to make dream catchers. I used to be really passionate about that. Oh my gosh, I didn't know you did that. Really? Oh, I'll have to show no. you. Yeah, I yeah. Used to, years ago, I used to make, yeah, oh my gosh, I've probably a hundred at least I made, yeah. That's awesome. You're yeah. going to send me some pictures. I will. Like when my Nana passed away, she loved to knit and she had a lot. She, she had a knitting group called the Knitwits. <laughs> and <laughs> no, and but she had all this really nice wool, like alpaca wool, and it's like super soft and expensive, like all this really nice. I don't know. What am I trying to say? Like the string, the I can't even. Why can't I think of it? But either way, I made like a lot of dream catchers out of her. Why, oh, the wow. the stuff that you knit with. Why can't I think of it? Yarn. Yes. No. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yarn, oh. ribbon, all that. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. <laughs> so that was do you have any hobbies that you're passionate about that's just like between you and yourself oh yeah I yeah I think a lot of my art I do macrame painting mm-hmm. resin those are all things that I didn't allow myself to get into until after I had felt like I, you know, I, I played with them throughout my life, but like didn't allow myself to dive into them until I felt like, like I was set in my career. And then I wish I would have gave myself, you know, more access to those things yeah. along the way. Something we talked about with Anna in a recent episode is kind of that peeling away of all the things that we put on for other people and really getting to the core of like who we are and what we're interested in. And that's only something I've done in the past few years of and kind of realizing that like my career itself was something I was kind of doing for others. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of at this place now where I'm content in my career. I know that it's a means to an end and there's things that I find joy in and that I enjoy in it, but I really focus on the things that I do outside of my work. There's been times when I used to volunteer for a local, um, it's called Rape Response. It doesn't have the greatest, it's a very bold name, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but basically it's a uh, local um, organization that supports survivors. They go, so what I would do is I would respond, I would take call for like a weekend and go and respond if there was a sane exam that was going to happen at the hospital. So I would arrive with the victim and just be like a a support person to them. So wasn't functioning as a nurse, wasn't performing the same exam, but I was there to let them know they had support, what their resources were. Other things that they do, they um, will like go with you to court, which is something beautiful that I think that they do if you choose to go to court. Like I didn't take my person to court. And one of the reasons was I was so scared to face him in court. And Mm -hmm. so one of the things 
this organization does is like gives you people to like back you up and like, we're going to go and fight with you. And they do, they have a lot of other resources in the community. So I used to do that, but now I live too far away. You have to be within like 30 minutes of the hospital to do that. Volunteering at, I have a dream of opening a cat cafe. I love it. I know you do. (laughs) (laughs) And so what I did in the meantime was I volunteered at a local shelter to really get a true idea of like, okay, if I have a cat cafe and I have to take care of 20 different cats, what does that look like? You know, what are the supplies you need? What is, you know, just the day to day of like cleaning and all those types of things. And that's what I got some steps for us of like following your passion and how to kind of take steps towards that. And the first one is just identifying what your passion is or multiple passions. And sometimes, you know, that takes time. It takes that peeling away of what others expect of you and what are you truly passionate about. Also takes a self-reflection of like, what are your strengths? What are you good at? What are you talented at? And building on those. Then it asks you to set clear goals. So define your vision. I teach a nurse mentor class at my organization and we tell people to set SMART goals. So SMART goals are specific, they're measurable, they're achievable, they're relevant to what you're trying to accomplish, and then they're time bound. You're going to accomplish it by this date. Uh, When you have that specific of a goal, it helps you to really be clear on what you're working towards. And then once you get your clear goals, just developing a plan, you know, taking small chunks. So with the Cat Cafe idea, one of the first things I did, I joined a Facebook group of people that are wanting to open Cat Cafes because there is so many things that go into it that you would not even think of. First of all, I've never been a business owner in my life. Like, I don't know Mm -hmm. taxes and like the things you have to do for employees and like the laws and like I've worked places. So I know some laws like, you know, having breaks and things like that, but all the other stuff, I don't know. Do you want it to be like an adoption based cafe or just these are my cats and tiramisu is going to be wreaking havoc all over (laughs) your whole, your whole (laughs) facility? (laughs) No, (laughs) Uh, definitely adoption based. So what a lot of people do is they partner with like a local shelter, they will host their cats. And a lot of times the shelter, so it's kind of like a, I can't think of the word right now, mutually beneficial thing. So the shelter might provide the food and litter and things like that. And then the cat cafe will have these cats on display. It gets people in more seeing the cats, interacting with them, and then they'll charge the adoption fee. Typically, that adoption fee goes back to the shelter, and the cafe itself makes their money off of the entrance fee and then any kind of like stuff that they sell, you know, trinkets and stuff. Yeah. Which, I mean, you're pulling in cat enthusiasts. I've been to cat mm-hmm. cafes in Italy, Georgia. Where else did I go to one? There's one in Savannah. I feel like I've been to three, but I can't think of all of them right now. Um, They're all a little bit different. And you also have to go with like food laws and what is the health codes in your area. And you have to get approval from all these people. So there's like, I had this idea. I want to have a cat cafe. But then you have to go into what Mm -hmm. does that actually take to make that happen, which there's so much more into it, which is important to mention like, when you think about following your passion, you have these ideas and a lot of times they're, they might seem lofty or whatever, or, you're, or you think like, okay, I'm just going to open a cat cafe. It's going to be awesome. It's going to solve all my problems. There's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot yeah. in maintaining it, funding it, like all these things. Mm-hmm. So n- I feel like nothing really comes without work. <laughs> well, of course, and- yeah. And sometimes we have to, um, like, I know we're very much in a, like, instant gratification society. And so we have to realize, like, it's not going to be instant. Mm -hmm. It's going to take some work. One of the other steps they talk about is building a support network. And so I was just Googling one time. I don't even know what I Googled. 
but I found a small business mentor in my community for free. So this guy actually met with me, talked with me about what types of things I would need. He was available, like if I wanted to continue on that path, but I told him, you know, I just need some initial, like, what are the first steps to do that I can look into? And then I might go back to that, but who knows? You might have mentors in your community based on what you're looking to do. Like I said, joining the Facebook group was a community in itself. Mm -hmm. And then two, just like sticking small steps. Um, (laughs) Some of my small steps have been like buying decor that I would like to put in (laughs) the cat cafe. Love that. I'm like, "Mm." I'm waiting to do any big steps until Jordan graduates college and then we'll go from there. But it's kind of where I'm at with that. I'm excited for you. Have you thought about a location? I I want it to be in like a foot traffic area. Mm-hmm. So Explore I'm thinking from like, Atlanta. <laughs> there so there is one in Atlanta and that's mm. one of the things that they talk about in the group is like how far away should you be from other cat cafes yeah. to like be respectful. So I think either probably not our town, but um in Gainesville where I work would be a great location. Like we have lots of town squares. So those mm-hmm. would be perfect areas to have it. Every time Jordan sees a building for sale, he's like, Hey, you could put a cat cafe there. I'm like, it's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Who's going to see it? <laughs> I like but that. I he's afraid. enthusiastic. You said you're afraid. He is. <laughs> That's a, I'm so afraid big, of failure. Yeah. If, yeah, for sure. That's another thing that I came across just researching like how to find your passion is pushing through that fear and the fear of failure. Like examine your fears. Yeah, that's a big one. I think another passion project that you and I have both done is this podcast. (laughs) I remember the first time we ever talked about this podcast. It was back in October 2023 in that botanical garden. Yes. That's when we first had this discussion and it literally just started as a discussion. And now here we are. Yep. And I think I texted you in like December. I was like, let me know when you're ready to start a podcast. And I was not ready to start a podcast. <laughs> I, I was not in a good mental state during that time. But let me tell you, it has helped me push through my fears. And allowed me to express myself and really think deeply about myself and just about different topics that we talked about and kind of like review my belief system and do research on different topics. I've I've learned a lot. I love it. I do too. I knew like in a lot of times I think your passion might start with a vague idea and that's kind of how this podcast started. And then we just continue to evolve like it's in our name yeah and I I had this big fear going into it of feeling like one people are going to be like who are you to talk about this like you have shit to work on yeah that's that's what we're here for we sure do <laughs> I'm not perfect <laughs> Mm-mm. And then, too, I felt like, oh, well, I just have to, like, know everything, it, like, without thinking, like, you can research it. Like, you don't have to have had experienced everything to speak on it. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. I like it. I came across this Japanese concept called Ikigai. Have you ever heard of it? It sounds familiar. It's... <sighs> It's like discovering your purpose through exploring the intersection of what you love, what you're good at, what the world needs, what you can be paid for. It's like an age-old philosophy that offers like a structured approach to identifying your purpose. And just to lead a life that you would feel is more meaningful to you, there's like a whole diagram. You can look it up. It's all over the internet. But I, I do. You, yep. Now that you mentioned it. Yeah. You fill out like certain portions of it. And I, I don't know. I haven't done it personally, but I heard about it a long time ago. And then when I came across it after I researched this, I seems like it's been helpful to a lot of people. Yeah, that's a perfect way. I know someone mm-hmm. in my life right now who 
I mean, actually multiple people who went into their career thinking they wanted to do one thing, got well into it, and then was like, I want nothing to do with this anymore. Mm -hmm. One of those being my husband. He's been a very accomplished chef, has worked for celebrity chefs, you know, has really done a lot in his career. And he finally like got into a serious relationship with me, realized that the restaurant industry really does not lend to having a family. Yes, lots of people do it, but it's kind of like leadership in healthcare. Yeah, mm-hmm. people do it, but they don't ever see their family. Yeah. <laughs> so he decided he'd rather do something that he could spend time with his family. And he's following his passion now of playing hockey, which is amazing. He is about to join. So he was doing a beginner's league before, and now it's the next league up. I don't know what it's called, but it seems so much more official because they have like actual jerseys. He's going to have his name on it. And it's something he wanted to do since he was a kid and his mom would never let him. She didn't want him to get hurt. And Mm -hmm. he's doing great. I see him fall all the time. I mean, not all the time. He's a great skater. But when he falls, I'm like, oh my God, that looks horrible. But he seriously has so much padding on. He's like, oh, I'm fine. I'm like, are you sure? (laughs) I'm terrified to ice skate. I can rollerblade just fine. I cannot ice skate. Like I, mm-mm. I don't even understand I can do the a concept s- of slow it. Slow little s- circle around the rink if I'm close <laughs> to the wall and can like yeah. grab it if I need it. Yeah. But other than that, he's like backwards doing spins, all this stuff. I'm like, how? <laughs> I know. Do you remember when we were kids? They did that huge party for life on New Year's Eve that you could go stay the night at that church. Was that like a lock-in? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But they would take us to different destinations. There's no way they would do this now in this day and age. There was like thousands of us there. They had like Christian concerts. But one of the destinations they took us to was the ice skating place. And that was the first time I ever ice skated. And I fell so hard. (laughs) And I never never went, did it again. But I, I I love that. He's found passion and a hobby he can do, and he just goes out there and be, you know, with his community and his friends, and and you get yeah. to see, like, sh- share it with him in a way just to watch him just find joy in life. Hmm. I love it. Absolutely love it. And those were things that, like, he had thought of before, but never really took the steps to do. And. I think it's important to have people in your life that really encourage you to follow mm-hmm. your passions. I He encourages me with all my passions. I have many, but definitely with the Cat Cafe, but with my art, with all kinds of things. He's like, yeah, do it. Do it. Like, he's never like, mm, no. <laughs> yeah. I used to be super passionate about yoga. I used to be able to do crazy poses. I felt so good. I looked better when I weightlifted, like aesthetically, but yoga was made me stronger and I felt better. I want to get into that again. I used to want to like teach it and learn everything about it. I remember seeing you post about it and I could see your passion through your post. Mm -hmm. What do you think kind of got you out of it? Just life? Nursing school. (laughs) Oh, shit. Yeah, that'll do it. I remember being in nursing school and like wanting to read a book for pleasure so bad, but never being able to because you had so many books. You're not even we could do a whole episode on nursing school as you lose (laughs) your identity and then have to regain a new one after you graduate because you're not in the same place you left off four years ago. It's transformational. Like, yes, it is. Insane. It's yes, wild. it is. I will say one thing about nursing, and you and I have kind of talked about this before. There is so many things you can do in nursing. Mm-hmm. So if you get tired of the bedside, there are there's case management, which I don't. There's a downside to everything, but there's you can work in IT as a nurse. You can work in leadership, education. You can do virtual nursing. You can do like we talked about the other day. You can do IV infusions. Oh at my a gosh, hydration that, station. Yeah, I've been bouncing that idea off between me and my boyfriend, and he 
I would love to do that. It, I mean, I walk into this little room. She's got some plants. She's got a TV. She's got some recliners. And she's a nurse and she owns her own business and she hooks you up and you get this liter bolus of IV, you know, whatever. She has a menu of different IV infusions you can get based on what your needs are that day. I have COVID, so I got like these all these vitamins for your immune booster. But oh my gosh, and she sat there and turned on a country playlist and we just, you know, shooting the shit. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is the most peaceful nursing job I think I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that it sounds amazing. Mm-hmm. I would be interested. And that's one thing too. So if you see something, like you see someone in a career or something that you think, wow, that looks amazing, don't be afraid to simply go up to them and say, Hey, can I ask you about how you got into this? Yeah. And you know, what are the good? What's the bad? Absolutely. I was picking her brain for sure. I think that's what we got to hold on to with with finding our passion is like when you're out and about and something all of a sudden just like sparks you and you're like, oh, that sounds amazing. Follow that. Keep Mm -hmm. going with that. Like, don't let it fly away. Like, hold on to that and follow it and see where it goes. Yeah. Yes, yes. What else do you got for us for following your passion? Not a whole lot. I I don't listen to a whole lot of Tony Robbins. I know my mom really likes him, but he had this whole, all these concepts and like this whole pl- list to face your fears and find your passion. And it was really, it was really motivational and inspiring. I'm not going to go through them all, but if anybody wanted to look that up, that is some content out there that I thought was, could be helpful to somebody. And I think we kind of touched on it in the beginning, but don't paint yourself into a corner. Don't think, okay, just because I got into this, I got to stick with it, or this is the only lane I got to stay in. I think so long we've been in these niches, even people that like talk about like uh, gaining social media followings Mm -hmm. and stuff, they're like, you have to have a niche and you have to stick to it. No, maybe you do for an algorithm. That's wonderful. But for your own personal enjoyment, do what makes you happy. And that might be seven, like we talked with Anna, that might be a bunch of different things. They're gonna, you're gonna find ways that they connect to each other anyways. Like before, when I was in nursing school, I used to do like film festival films with people that I knew. And it was just like fun acting, wasn't getting paid for it. I also did do like some background acting and actual motion pictures. And I, You know, thinking like going into nursing, how is that going to apply to nursing? I have been a producer and director for Mm -hmm. multiple nursing healthcare videos that we have done in our health system. So it it all ties together. And and now we're here doing this. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I think. It's awesome. It is. During this season of my life, I've been very passionate about just peeling back all these layers and all my beliefs and just really trying to tune in with my true self and being able to regulate my nervous system and cultivate healthy relationships and finding the tools to do that, whether it's reading the internal family systems book or going to EMDR therapy. And even just that little moment we had with Anna on the Mm -hmm. last episode, the way I felt after that Reiki healing she just did briefly is how I felt after I come out of the EMDR therapy. So I knew it, it touched, I knew it like touched me so deep. So I think that's what I've been more passionate about than anything is really not something that money can buy me. There's this overall sense of peace that I think we all crave and try to find, but sometimes our actions and you know, our choices don't lead us there. And so I've been very mindful about what I'm choosing to do and the things I'm choosing to say and be a part of. Absolutely. And I think that's such an important thing to say, because I think so much we think that our passion has to be something that produces something Mm -hmm. for others or, and your passion can be healing yourself in 
creating and cultivating peace in your life. And that, honestly, I encourage everyone to find a way to do that. Yeah, seek that passion because that alone, do that first, and that's really going to lead your the rest of your life and your decisions. Mm-hmm. Yes. You have anything else Alrighty. you want to share? I don't think so. Okay. You doing anything fun well, today besides getting them chicken pot pies? <laughs> it's rainy here. <sighs> probably not. I will probably take a nap since I've been up for, I don't even know how many hours that is. What's three to 12? Math. A long time. Nine hours? Mm-hmm. You Nine hours. Oh, like God. Half a it's day. a work day. <laughs> I got to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to do anything today? I'm still going, just gonna yeah, resting. I'm going down to Detroit and staying in the Ren Center. So it'll be like super high up and overview of the city. And then tomorrow going to the early Lions game. So it'll be exciting. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope you continue to feel better. Thank you. I'm on my, well on my way. Well, thank you all for listening to us this week. Make sure you like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube.